back to scrap metal work. As you can see, the pile has been growing in here a little bit where I had originally gotten this bay cleaned up of all the trash that was left on the farm when I arrived. Now there's more trash in it. And this is a combination of helping some friends clean up some of their sites, you know, here and there, there's a few pieces of metal that uh, I'm diverting from the landfill as they're just taking out trash to the landfill of you know old abandoned dump sites and stuff like that. <clears throat> I've been kind of accumulating small amounts of steel here from little projects like that. And as well as every now and then, if I see a dumpster, you know, while I'm out running errands, I'll check it. So like, oh, this stuff came from just, there was a bunch of these poles and this filing cabinet in a dumpster. You know, they were doing, I guess, some sort of renovation work at this building. I had passed on the way to town. So that's where some of this stuff came from. You can see old poles. We got a filing cabinet. I don't know exactly what this was. It came out of an old trash pit, burn pit situation, some old fencing material. Scrapyards really don't like wire, steel wire like this. That's something to note. This stuff is a small enough gauge and it's so rusty and crusty. I think they'll take it in this small amount, but if you get really thick gauge wire, they typically will not accept that stuff unless it's cut in really short lengths because that can actually bind up and clog the uh, the shredding equipment. It can be a real issue if we're talking about heavy duty, like from construction sites, the crane wire, that sort of thing. So has some old chairs and just really rusty, this old basketball hoop, some of this fencing and stuff. And uh, so just a bunch of junk. This is not the whole load, but I'm gonna get some of this loaded up in the truck today. And then uh, I just have like half an hour here. I'm just gonna get that stuff thrown into the truck. Uh, and then if I have time today, but if not sometime within the next day or two, I'm gonna try to strip the rest of this uh, sheet metal off the roof that's just falling apart here. It's a hazard when it gets windy. It's also loud. And I'm just gonna get some of this stuff cut or folded, however I can fit it into my truck and out of here. And then I've got a bunch more of those steel tobacco racks in these sheds that will top off the load. So we'll fit that stuff in as well as we can, you know, Tetris, Jenga block it in, and then uh, top it off with those tobacco racks. And then within the next two days, I'll be heading to the scrapyard. I'm gonna get some of this mulch stuff shoveled out first. All right, well, these gloves have seen better days. It's starting to get kind of stiff and dry rotted and cracked. Probably gonna get some new gloves. Anyway, that whole mess, is now in the truck. I find it useful to get all the flat stuff, the stuff that might catch wind, like all this sheet metal, all this fencing stuff, right? All that flat metal. I try to put that in first. Like I said, it can catch wind. It's pretty bulky. So having weight down on top of it helps. And, um, you know, this is not my most efficient load. We're also not done. I'm going to stack a bunch more of those tobacco racks up on here. We'll get them up like I normally do up at least up to the back rack and uh but like I said not the most efficient snack it's not going to be the heaviest load I've ever hauled but they can't all be the best one can't all be the best load you've ever taken in sometimes it's just about cleaning stuff up or cash flow or just getting stuff out of the way when it's convenient all right so now some fun stuff I've got some of these mixed bins right this is a lot of wire brass I got to go through and sort some of this stuff Got this whole bucket worth of crap that I need to go through and sort and uh, start getting organized. You can see I've started here. This is some number two copper, okay? And when we're talking about classifying our metals, every yard is a little bit different in how they classify and buy materials. And it also depends on how much bulk you have, your relationship with that yard. So all that is subject to, to change and variation, but typically number two copper, it's number two it's clean of any other, it's just copper, right? It's clean of any other steel, plastic, other metals, but it's got some glue maybe, or some tape, or it may have some sort of varnish on it, or it may just be really, it's got some corrosion, right? You can see this is all corroded. So you're not gonna get, typically you won't get number one for stuff that looks like this. You definitely won't get bare bright for any of this wire. The other thing with, even if this wire was super clean, like you can see this part, right here is pretty clean and shiny. It's not quite thick enough, I don't think, to get the bare bright price. It's uh, it's just borderline, it's a little bit too thin. Typically for bare bright, they like thicker stuff than this hair-like fine wire. 
So stuff like this, this is gonna be number one wire. It's typically classified, number one insulated wire, I should say. It's got a single strand of copper inside that's pretty thick. When you bend it, it's really stiff. It stays in place. See that? Typically that's gonna be classified as number one insulated. You could strip that, get bare bright. I'm probably just gonna leave it. This again, this is not single strand, but it's several very thick strands of copper. So this is probably gonna go as insulated. Number one, they often, sometimes they'll call it number one. Sometimes they'll call it based on the percentage of copper they're gonna be able to recover. They might call it 70 to 80% copper recovery on this type of wire. It's very stiff. I can't even really bend it with one hand. So again, you could strip this stuff. If you have a stripper, like a, uh, with a motor or a drill powered stripper, it's very easy to rip through this stuff. If you don't have a stripper, it can be very time consuming and not really worth your time unless you have a lot of really nice big pieces. Okay, now we got brass. And so with brass, let me grab my file real quick. Good to have a file with you. It's a little bit dark in here. Apologize for that, I don't have a light set up right now. But you wanna come in all right, so a couple things. Just if we're trying to, first of all, identify brass, I know this is brass, but to show you how I know, it's not magnetic. This is a magnet, it sticks to the file, okay? It's not magnetic. I cut it here to cut it in half because I already knew this was brass and I wanted to get a piece of steel out to make it clean brass. I, I did that, you know, a long time ago. It's just been sitting in this bucket. But where I made this cut, you can see the metal. It's that nice gold color. That's gonna be brass. Now you can also take a file to it. You can see here where a file went to it and exposed that it is in fact brass colored. So that's clean brass. Now, dirty brass is gonna be brass that maybe has some steel in it. Let's see. Okay, so that screw, I thought the screw was gonna be steel, but it's sticking and it looks like I've actually already filed that at some point. That's a brass screw. You'll find that on older stuff sometimes. But you look here, that's a piece of aluminum. You can tell by the color, it's not sticking, so it's not iron. Doesn't look like stainless, not very shiny, it has to be cast aluminum. And you can see here also where, again, I filed on that. So you can see the color of the metal underneath any corrosion and paint. So if I can't get that piece of aluminum removed, maybe I'll go grab a screwdriver and see if I can pop that off. If I can't get that off, that's dirty brass. So that's what we're doing. We're going through this bucket. What's dirty, what's clean. Another example here, you can see a brass fitting from a pipe. This has some copper on it. Again, if we wanted to check, we would file on that copper here. You can see we've already cut it. That exposes it. It's got that orangey color, right? That's copper. Brass has a copper in it. It's an alloy with copper. And so if you have a piece of brass with a small chunk of copper on it, that is typically considered clean brass. The scrap metal is in a way, getting a little extra piece of copper. They're paying brass price, they're getting a little bit of copper. Typically, they won't mind that being in the clean brass pile, but check with your local yard. Check this guy out. Where are you going, dude? And uh, see what they'll call it. Here's a good example of a piece that I'm not gonna mess with. I don't know if you can tell on the video, but I ground into it. This is a brass color. This whole chunk is brass, but there's steel pipe that is threaded into it. Probably not worth my time to try to clean this up. The only way really you could go about it, I think, is using an angle grinder to cut this material. I don't think that I would be able to loosen this piece of pipe. Also, this screw. Stuff, is, this is just old and corroded. It's a small piece. It's probably not worth your time trying to clean this up. Probably worth just putting it in the dirty brass bin. All right, so anyway, a lot of this brass I had already gone through and check to see how clean it is and clean some of it up. It's all doorknob here. This is all the clean stuff. This is all the stuff with copper in it here. This is all dirty with the exception of these two pieces that I cut in half. I wanted to remove the valve just to see what that looks like. All right, so we can see this valve here. Still kind of hot for me just cutting it, hold on. So I don't know how well you can see that, but this, the ball from the ball valve is actually brass when you grind into it. It's maybe chrome plated or something. There were these two little plastic gaskets in there. Otherwise this was totally free of any contaminants. So prior to having cut this specific valve, would it have been clean? Possibly. I think you probably could have gotten that into the clean bin. Most yards I would think would take that. 
I don't scrap a lot of brass. I don't get a lot of brass. So I don't know the answer, but is this something I'm going to cut again if I get more of them? No, but I just, like I said, I just wanted to peek inside and see what's what in there. All right, so anyway, there's all the clean brass. I've got this brass with copper in this little tub, just in case they don't want that. Dirty brass in there. Now I'm moving on to my bin here of stuff. There's a lot of wire in here, so we're gonna go over some wire processing things. Most yards don't want connectors and plugs on their wire. They'll give you a lower price if they're on there. So there's all my connectors, you know, plug ends. There is still brass and copper in these. There's various ways to remove these. If you're going to get into the micro scrapping, removing these, uh, you might want to look up plug soup. You can basically boil these plugs in water. It's going to be kind of smelly. You don't want to be breathing that stuff in. But once they're heated up, it's very easy to take pliers and remove these. I'm not going to do that. The yard, most yards will buy these. I don't know, probably 30, 40 cents a pound for these if I had to guess. They'll buy it as like a copper bearing material. Same with this stuff. You know, a lot of yards will pay for this because there is bits of wire in here. It won't be a super lucrative price, but if you're clipping them off anyway, don't toss them in the trash. They are recyclable. And, uh, you know, worst case, you can just throw these in with steel and that'll get shredded up and sorted out in the steel shredder. So I'm going to get in, break into this stuff here. Most of this wire on top is, uh, this is going to be probably number one. I don't know if you can get the camera to focus. This is some thickish, well, kind of borderline the gauge on this stuff. It's, it's rather thin. It's like kind of on the lower end of what I would call thick enough to be insulated number one wire. We'll see, we'll separate this out. I don't think I'm gonna bother stripping it. There's some like this that has the more fine hair-like wire. Might get classified more as number two. But uh, yeah, let me get this all out of here and then we'll start breaking into this pile. Okay, so you can see how this is double insulated, right? There is copper wire in there, but there's two sets of insulation on it. This is typically gonna be called extension wire, or junk wire. So all your extension cords go in there. Usually pretty reasonable price on that stuff, like a dollar a pound or so. Anyway, it adds up quick. This, uh, this whole spool of wire I found in the trash, this is lamp wire. A lot of the times this will get lumped in with extension wire. So, you know, it's a whole spool brand new. I'd rather see someone use it, but uh, this stuff is pretty cheap. This is like a $5 roll, something like that. So reselling it, not very lucrative or easy. Um, I'll probably just throw it in the shed and eventually I'll find someone who has a use for it, give it to them. Or, uh, you know, worst case, if I really need to make space in the future, I could, th you know, just get this off the spool, throw it in the extension wire pile. Feels wasteful, but could be done. Anyway, for now, this is gonna go over here and sit in case I need to repair like a hundred lamps in the future. Let's see, got a switch. Some people take these apart. I think there's some goodies inside of this little Use panel, switch, relay, thingamajig here, whatever you want to call this. I am probably just going to throw it in shred. I guess we could take it apart and see. I'm kind of curious what's in there. This I don't think you'll be able to pick up on the video. This is misleading. It looks like copper. When you cut into it, it's shiny silver. This is actually aluminum wire, probably coated with copper. So this will go in our sheet aluminum. I forget what this came out of. Came, something I was disassembling, a TV or a microwave or something. Uh, again, I don't know exactly what this came out of. A little piece of low-grade circuit board. You can get... Uh, I think the price for low-grade circuit boards is pretty comparable to steel, but they process it differently, so it's a little bit easier for them to recycle it. If you separate it, uh, you can throw circuit boards into the shred pile, I'm pretty sure. I mean, obviously, when a lot of these appliances get shredded, they have circuit boards in them, and that gets processed. But if you've already gone through the effort to take them out, that goes in trash. That goes in my number two insulated wire. If you've already gone through the trouble to take them out, might as well keep them separate for the yard. A lot of this wire here, this is uh, not going to, it's going to be very fine hair-like wire on the inside. So it's number two. It's not quite as good as the number one insulated, but this will be number two insulated wire. I don't think there's any connectors on this bit. So we'll throw that down there. This stuff also, number two, it's bendy. Actually, this hardly has anything in it. 
not quite sure what to do with this sucker. Hmm. We'll throw it in the extension wire because it's got a lot of plastic crap on it. So I'm going to use two hands to go through a lot of this to get the gist. I'm just kind of going through wires. If it's got a little connector type thing or a little zip tie or whatever, taking that off and um, sorting it out. Extension wire number two. I don't think there's much number one in here, but now this, uh, this is the same as that lamp wire. It's an extension cord from a lamp. I learned this from Scrapping with Grandpa here on YouTube. Great channel. If you're into scrapping, you should check them out. You can easily split this stuff, and then you have two wires, and then I think technically you can throw it in with your number two insulated wire as opposed to extension cord. I'm not 100% sure if that's always how that works, but makes sense to me, so we're going to see. Some number one stuff came off of uh, one of these old tobacco curing furnaces that goes in the number one bucket. That's what a lot of this stuff came off of. It's also where this bit of uh, grounding copper, this is solid strand. I gotta get these little plastic pieces off, but this is number two copper all day long. Actually, honestly, this might go as number one. Um, there's no paint or epoxy or anything. It's just a little bit corroded. Might be able to sneak, well, not sneak. You might be able to actually get that legitimately as number one. It depends on your yard, what they call it. Starting to get down to the end of that bucket. There's a lot of just wire. This is some other miscellaneous just steel off of that uh those old furnaces there might be a little motor in here it's so small that i'm really not worried about it that's going in the steel bucket another piece of steel right here now this thick enough it might almost be number one or prepared steel it's got a little piece of little brass nugget up here you could pull off with a wrench if you want to i may or may not but uh yeah we're getting to them. just a little bit more wire to go through some more of this copper grounding stuff and uh actually made it through this bin a few things of note um these must have came off an old tv or a microwave these little things these can go in with your motors this is a uh, copper typically it's epoxy coated it's a small amount i'm probably not going to pull it all off and also a lot of the times this will be like a copper coated aluminum but this can go in the motor transformer bin as is another little piece right here all right, so two of those were actually solid copper. They are coated, so they'll go as number two, but worth taking them off. The other one going in the motor bin. All right, well, I'm at the bottom of the bucket, and I'm getting hungry. I got this yoke out of a TV to take apart. I got to decide if I want to do anything with this thing right here. Decide if I want to get that brass nugget. Everything else is all sorted out. Got my trash pail there. Didn't really put a whole lot into that this time, but... So this is really just a lot of different wire. You know, I've got Ethernet cable, category wire, cat wire, the number two insulated, extension wire, junk wire. This is that number one stuff. And then this is my bucket of number two copper. This is, um, again, I have this in here because this is thicker gauged, number two insulated. It could just go in the number two insulated bucket, but I might decide to strip this stuff. I feel like with how... Uh, dry rotted these uh the insulation is it might be pretty easy to rip that stuff out of there we'll see we already looked at the brass We've got this thing of uh potentially number one copper a little bit of corrosion no other contamination no solder nothing like that so i'm gonna add into the old plug bucket but that's about it like i said the truck's partially loaded i still got to take care of this motor here get this copper separated this was a pretty large motor that I pulled off of one of those tobacco furnaces. And I'd like to try the machete method. So I'm going to see if I can get a cheap machete. Take that sucker apart. That's a pretty big, it's a pretty big heavy motor. It's worth getting all the copper out of there. And uh, yeah. All right, well, here's the copper out of that yoke from that TV. I pretty much just used the sledgehammer, smashed it, cleaned up the trash bits. Copper came out real easy. I got two halves here. There's still some copper and some steel left in this thing. I'm actually not sure. This might be aluminum, copper-coated aluminum. But uh, I think they will accept this as a motor, so I'll put it in my motor bin. I'll stick it on the top. If they say they don't want it or it's going to make the pile dirty, I'll just throw it into the steel. But uh, now obviously it's not a motor, but motors, transformers, yokes, they're all kind of in the same classification of copper, aluminum, steel in roughly the same percentages and uh, the scrapyard can buy them all usually the same because it's about the same way methods and tools that they need to break them down shred them up and recycle them so anyway that is 
the end of my bucket. The truck's loaded up, sun's going down, time to get dinner. Well, uh, we'll do an update once the truck's loaded up and I'll take all this stuff in. I doubt I'll be taking, you know, with the non ferrous stuff, I tend to wait till I have an entire full bucket, which I don't have yet. So this stuff won't go to the yard for a while, but the steel's going soon, I'll make a video on that. Or it'll be the end of this video, we'll see. Well, I gotta say, this is the first, and you'll see what I'm talking about in a moment, but uh, I've never had my truck pulled inside of this barn, never. It's never really been an option. We've had all sorts of stuff in here. <clears throat> For those who haven't watched some of my other videos, or I don't really talk about this a ton, but we have some renters, some family friends who rent this space for my grandparents to use it as a storage space. So none of this equipment belongs to me or the family. And the two years that I've been down here, this whole barn has been full of trucks and tractors and trailers and equipment. <clears throat> They're finally starting to free some of it up, partly so I could get access to some of these barns for my own storage and for what this video is about, which is scrapping. Getting some of this crap cleaned up. A little dark in here though, under the barn. Anyway, um, I'm gonna start getting loaded up, but just wanted to talk about that. It's exciting to pull in here. It's really nice. I can, it's a little rainy out, but I can actually be have the windows down in here because I'm fully undercover. In the summertime when it's hot, I'll have a nice shady spot. I mean, I'm just, I'm fired up. One other thing I wanted to talk about yesterday that I forgot. <clears throat> when I was going through some stuff in the barn to scrap, I seen this thing. You know, this is mostly plastic, but this looked kind of metallic and it's heavy. And so uh, I took a magnet to it. It wasn't magnetic. And I thought, oh man, maybe that's brass. I started grinding on it with the file. Can't get this thing to focus here. This valve's plastic. This whole valve is plastic. So this entire thing is going to the trash. I mean, there's a piece of steel. Oh, that might be plastic too. Yeah, this thing might be all plastic. Anyway, the whole thing's going to the dump, but uh, I'm gonna get this bucket of miscellaneous shred iron. Oh man, that is heavy. I might need two hands. These buckets can get heavy, but they can hold a lot of weight in these little five gallon buckets. Uh, don't let that soup can fool you. This is mostly really heavy stuff. Some of it I know it looks stainless, but it's actually, in fact, magnetic. Well, I gotta say, I don't know how easy it is to tell with the lighting in here and the camera angles, but this is a rather precarious load. I haven't had a load this precarious in a long time. I think we're still certainly road safe. I'm gonna get this really well and strapped down. But you can see, you know, we're not totally flat, right? And so that's going to put more weight wanting to go off to the side, which again, can be dangerous, right? If you're going on a turn, I'm going to drive real slow. It's County roads. I'm not getting on any highways. There shouldn't be a whole lot of folks on the roads today because it's kind of a cloudy, drizzly day, but not actually raining hard. So visibility is still good. No fog or anything like that. And like I said, we're going to get a lot of straps on here, get out to the yard, you can see I found some extra sheet metal. I don't like putting this stuff up high, but I got it nice and squeezed in with the straps. So I'm just going to go and get some of my straps up real quick. I'm going to go over here. Every time I think I'm done pulling copper and goodies out of these barns, I find another little, little tidbit. So this little cover, drain cover, I don't know what this was. This is the back of the barn. There's a little piece of copper in here. So I'm just gonna pull that out real quick before I forget about it, throw it in the copper bin. And then I'm gonna see if I can squeeze some of my aluminum cans into the cab of my truck. They're all the way back there. I gotta really, all this cardboard is going to either get burned or going in the garden. This is kind of a mess that I gotta deal with. Anyway, well, this will definitely be the most cans I've ever brought in. And guys, I gotta tell you, if you don't know already, for me at least, the state that I'm in, cans are not worth it financially for bringing into the scrapyard. This is not gonna be worth the cash for the time it took to collect all of these cans. But what it was is from cleaning up different piles of trash, like you saw in that one video a while back in my yard and some other piles of trash in the neighborhood. You know, it just, I just don't like seeing the trash. I felt motivated to clean up a few piles. You know, it's a small dent. There's tons more trash out in these woods and these fields, these roads, but I did a little bit, it felt good. And as I went through the trash, I sorted out, you know, 
cans I can recycle, glass I can recycle. Wasn't doing it to get paid, but since I'm going to the yard, I am going to take these in there anyway. I could have also taken them to the local recycling depot that would not have paid me for them. Um, but since I'm going to the yard anyway, I'm taking them. Some of these cans are my own. I do drink a lot of these seltzer water, so some of these are mine. But most of these came out of the trash, and they are all snugged in the back seat just like so all right we'll see what it's all worth let me get this strapped down All right, so here is how we did. We had about a thousand pounds, almost 1,100 pounds, right? 10.800. Steel is down at this yard to five cents a pound. Well, a little, almost six cents a pound. Anyway, that's dropped at least a cent and a half, almost two cents from the last time I was here, a little over a month ago. So that's a bit of a bummer, but it is what it is. Aluminum cans at 29 cents a pound. That is on par. 20 pounds hardly six dollars so like i said it's really not worth it financially but you know another six bucks on top of the load and i was getting the shit cleaned up anyway that might be the first time i've ever cussed on one of these i cuss a lot in real life i try to filter it out here on youtube but their one just slipped out is what it is uh you know like i said it's a bit of a bummer that steel is down there around six cents a pound but you know we're catching it on the downswing right now later in life we'll catch it on the upswing when it's high you know there have been plenty of times in the past where I've gone when it's a lot higher and I've made out pretty well. It's just how it is. It goes up and down. You know, oh, I'll take the parking brake off. It's gas money. It's grocery money. I had to get that stuff cleaned up right now anyway. It was a good time for me to do it. In my opinion, there's no sense really holding on to steel for better prices. Um, I'm not super motivated to be cleaning and getting the steel out of the barn as fast as possible with prices like this, but... I still don't think it's worth holding it. You know, when I've got time, when it's easy for me, convenient for me to get that stuff cleaned out, it makes sense to just keep on getting it cleaned out. And, uh, you know, like I said, prices aren't the best. They'll come up. I'll have more steel when they're up. And uh, that's that. All in all, discounting the picking up the cans, I'm probably about three hours for this whole trip. So three hours by seventy dollars that's still a pretty good hourly rate in my book you know i'm not killing it not getting rich doing that but absolutely worth my time you know it's a little over 20 an hour I mean, add in some time for the cans and whatnot right around 20 an hour and you got to consider a lot of that stuff that steel was just getting things out of the way things were not super efficiently stacked you know a thousand pounds that's kind of the lower lower threshold of what I want the truck to be loaded at before I make a trip out to the yard. If I have any less than a thousand pounds, it, you know, it starts to feel like, oh, I should probably wait until I can fit more in there. But a lot of the stuff I had just didn't stack efficiently today. And so we did get a thousand pounds, which like I said, that's my little, you know, magic round number in my head that I, that I aim for is at least a thousand. But as far as, you know, the past four or five months of hauling loads here and there, I think that's the lightest load I've taken in nothing wrong with that it just is what it is another thing i just want to say it's really important especially when you have well anytime you're scrapping metal but especially when you got stuff like sheet metal like what i had stuff cuts you really easy so it's really important to wear gloves be careful when you're moving that stuff i got a few very very minor scratches even though i was wearing gloves very superficial so that's a good thing but just something you want to be careful pay attention to safety Always have glasses on when you're at those yards and gloves, right? It's a huge deal. And um, But anyway, we got out of there successfully. I'm on the road to the grocery store and getting on with the rest of the day. It's about 2.30. I still got some time to get some stuff done. Got some stuff done this morning before I started loading up. So all in all, good day scrapping. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. It's always, uh, I just enjoy it, you know? It's always fun for me loading up, heading to the yard. And... Uh, I'll probably stop rambling there and let you guys get back to whatever you were doing. But as always, I appreciate you guys coming in and checking this out. Let me know if you have any comments, questions, concerns, thoughts. Always love hearing from y'all. And uh, 
have a good rest of the day or night, whatever time it is you're watching this. Real quick, I just want to touch on that motor that I mentioned. I did get a real cheap, you know, like $10 machete, and uh, this is what it looks like chopping through it. Uh, I, chopping through it with the machete was incredibly easy. This is the first time I've done it. I've seen this in other videos. Getting it chopped in half is just the first part, and there's a lot of different ways to go about getting the copper out of these motors. Uh, potentially, I could do a video on this in the future, but I don't do a ton of motors. It's not something that I'm in the habit of scrapping a lot. Uh, there's a lot of other good content creators out there with videos on how to scrap motors, but maybe it's something I'll do a video on in the future. You can see here I'm just trying to pound the last of the, uh, the copper windings out of this little steel casing. This specific motor I have done before. These are from the uh, furnaces in these tobacco houses, and the, the windings on these are just really sticky, and they don't want to come out. This is what the motor looked like before I took the casing off. It's a pretty big motor, pretty heavy, hard to move. So I've shown these in some other videos, but these are the furnaces. These are a couple extra furnaces that are actually outside of the tobacco sheds that they would normally operate inside of. And so you can just kind of get a glimpse of where uh, these motors, and also a lot of my scrap material recently has been coming from. So the motor would sit right there on that little shelf. And I'm gonna turn the camera. You can see where it would run the pulley, right, to turn the furnace. And there's all sorts of wiring and grounding wire and electrical wire, all sorts of goodies and stuff that were on here that since these are no longer in use they are getting scrapped out i've been in the process of stripping all these things down but like i said there's a lot of ways to go about these motors i did wind up getting this one apart and it had about uh eight pounds of copper inside of it which is pretty good you know eight pounds of copper at today's prices that's like at least 25 dollars. it's number two copper I'm still honing in my process of taking these motors apart. What I like doing was kind of jacking it up on two by fours and then using this nice, I don't know what you want to call this, this punch, this flat punch and a hammer to just bang on the windings until they come out. And I've got room there in between these wooden boards for it to come out. Some folks are really efficient at taking these motors apart and so they'll scrap out every single motor that they get or most of them anyway. I tend to only do it on the really large ones that have a lot of copper. I'm still working on becoming more efficient at actually taking these apart, making it more worth the time financially, but I really enjoy doing it so it kind of doesn't matter either way for me right now. If you don't know, you can take them in whole. You'll get about 30, 40 cents a pound for electric motors and the steel you get left over from taking them apart is considered number one or prepared steel. It's a higher price than just shred if you can separate it out.